Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nico and today I'm gonna be practicing my English reading a book from Hillary Clinton. This one right here. So let's go ahead and start right away. It's living history. And this is the author's note. In 1959, I wrote my autobiography for an assignment in sixth grade in 29 pages, most half filled with earnest scroll. I described my parents, brothers, pets, house, hobbies, school, sports, and plans for the future. 42 years later, I, I began writing another memoir. This one about the eight years I spent in the White House living history with Bill Clinton. I quickly realized that I couldn't explain my life as first lady without going back to the beginning. How I became the woman I was. It was that first day I walked into the White House on January 20, 1993 to take on a new role in experiences that would test and transform me in unexpected ways. By the time I crossed the threshold of the White House, I had been shaped by my family of bringing education, religious faith, and all that I had learned before. As the daughter of a staunch conservative father and more liberal mother, a student activist, an advocate for children and lawyer, Bill's wife and Chelsea mom. For each chapter, there were more ideas I want to discuss than space allowed, more people to include that I could be named, more places visited that could be described. If I mention everybody who has impressed, inspired, taught, influence and helped me along the way, this book would be several volumes long. Also, I've had to be selective. I hope that I have conveyed the push and pull of events and relationships that affect me and continue to shape and enrich my world today. Since leaving the White House, I have embark a new phrase of my life as U.S. Senator from New York, a humbling and daunting responsibility in complete account of my move to New York, campaign for Senate, and honor of working for people who elect me. We'll have to be told another time. But I hope this memoir illustrates how my success as candidate for Senate arose out of my White House experiences. During my years as First Lady, I became a better student of how government can serve people, how Congress really work, how people perceive politics and policy through the filter of the media the media and how Americans' value can be transferred, translated into economy and social progress. I learned the importance of America's engagement with the rest of the world, and I developed relationships with foreign leaders and understanding of foreign cultures that come in handy today. I also learned how to keep focus while living in the eye of many storms. I was raised to love my God and my country, to help others, to protect and defend the democratic ideas, ideals 
that have inspired and guided free people for more than 200 years. These ideals were nurtured in me as far back as I can remember. Back in 1959, I want to become a teacher or nuclear scientist. Teachers were necessary to train young citizens and without them, you couldn't have much of a country. America needs scientists because the Russian, the Russians have about five scientists to our one. Even then, I was fully a product of my country and its times, absorbing my family's lessons in America's needs as I consider my own future. My childhood in the 1950s and politics of the 1960s awakened my sense of obligation to my country and my commitment to service, college, law, school, and then marriage took me into the political epicenter of the United States. A political life, I've often said, it is a continuing education in human nature, including one's own. My involvement on the ground floor of two presidential campaigns and my duties as first lady took me to every state in our union and to 78 nations. In each place, I met someone or saw something that caused me to open my mind and my heart and deepen my understanding of the universal concerns that most of humanity shares. I always knew that America matters to the rest of the world. My travels taught me how the rest of the world matters to America, listening to what people in other countries are saying and trying to understand how they perceive their place in the world in essential to a future of peace and security at home and abroad. With this mind, I have included voices we don't hear often enough, voices of people in every corner of the globe who wants the same things we do, freedom from hunger, disease and fear, freedom to have a say in their own destinies, no matter, no matter their DNA or station in life. I have devoted considerable space in this page to my, for, to my foreign travels because I believe that the people and places are important and what I learned from them is part of who I am today. The two Clinton terms covered not only transforming period, transforming period in my life but also in America's. My husband assumed the president's terminate to reverse the nation's economy decline. Budget, the physics, and the growing inequities that undetermined, undermined opportunities for future generations of Americans. I support his agenda and worked hard to translate his vision into actions that improve the people's lives people's lives, strengthen, strengthen our sense of community and further our democratic values at home and around the world. Throughout Bill's tenure, we encountered political opposition, legal challenges and personal tragedies. And we made our faith share of mistakes. But when, we, but when he left, office in January 
2001, America was a stronger, better and more just nation, ready to tackle the challenges of a new century. Of course, the world we now inhabit is very different. from the one described in this book. As I write in 2003, it seems impossible that my time in the White House and only two years ago, it feels more like another lifetime because of what happened in September 11, 2001. The lost lives, the human grief, the smoldering crater, the twist metal, the shattered survivals, the victims' families, the unspeakable tragedy of it all. That September morning morning changed me and what I had to do as senator, a New Yorker and an American. And it changed America in ways we are still discovering. We are all on new ground and somehow we must make it common ground. My eight years in the White House takes me, takes my faith in political lives of marriages, marriage in our nation constitution. I became lightning rod for political and ideological battles waged over Americans' future and management for feelings good and bad about women's choices and roles. This book is the story of how I experienced those eight years as first lady and as the wife of the president. Some may ask how I could write an accurate account of events, people and places that are so recent and of which I'm still a part. I have done my best to convey my observations, thoughts, and feelings as I experience them. This is not meant to be comprehensive history, but a personal memoir that offers inside look at an extraordinary time in my life and in the life of America. Um, this is everything that I'm going to be reading today. Uh, I'm gonna try to finish this book. I think it is important. I want to read the other one, the one that Michelle Obama, uh, the Michelle Obama book too. So um, let me know in the comments what do you think about my reading. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.